I'm bored, very bored. Phones are beginning to be a bit like cars. They all look the same and they all do the same, except there is a change coming and it's this. The Samsung Flip 5 arrived here last week and in this video, we are gonna take a good close look at it. Welcome back to another video with me, David. And as I say, this week we are looking all at the brand new Samsung Z Flip 5. I think after that, I'm just gonna call it the Flip 5 because otherwise it's gonna to be too long-winded. I spent the weekend playing with this and the first thing that struck me was kind of an obvious thing, really. It was the form factor, the size of it, just the way it fits into the palm of your hand so neatly. When you're out and about in town, if you're carrying a normal slab phone, they can sometimes feel, particularly with the iPhones, with all of that glass at the top, they can feel top heavy and they can feel prone that they're gonna come out of your hand. But with this, you can really grab it. It's got such a, a tactile quality to it. You really want to just hold it and play with it. It's that kind of phone. It's almost like a, a widget for your hands. You can just play with it. It's a lovely size of it. And of course, that is because of the fold, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. It comes in four colors, except as normal, of course, there are special online only colors that Samsung have available. And that's the color that I've chosen here. It's a beautiful kind of olive green. It's beautiful in, in real life. And the fit and finish of the whole phone feels really premium. It feels every bit as good a quality as an iPhone. And it's a lovely, lovely thing to hold. The other thing to mention, of course, with that size, it means it's great to put in pockets as well, which is one thing for us blokes. But of course, for women whose jean pockets are even smaller and skinnier, the fact that this phone is so compact and the couple of women that I know that have picked this phone up and tried it out actually really like the size of it. It's just such a compact, convenient size. So the first thing I love about it is the form factor. It is a lovely size. The power behind the phone is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and it's everything you've heard about it. Quick, responsive, you can fly around on this phone, absolutely fly around. My phone has got eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Now that was a free upgrade for me on the pre-order day that I was making the order for this phone. They were doing a free upgrade from 256 to 512. So obviously I took that every day of the week. And by way of unlocking the phone, you've got both fingerprint recognition and face ID as well. When the phones open up, the display is actually the same size as an iPhone 14 Pro Max at 6.7 inches. It's an AMOLED display with Infinity Flex glass and it's got a 120 hertz refresh rate, although the cover screen is locked to 60 hertz. Peak brightness is outdoors up to 1600 nits. When I was using it in direct sunlight yesterday, it was absolutely fine. But talking about cover screen, that's where the fun really starts. As I say, the cover screen, now that is where I start to have some fun. I spend ages in there personalizing. You can do so much in there. There's all sorts of different wallpapers and designs and button layouts. You can, on, even the tint, you can adjust how much tint you want and when you want the tint to come in. You can honestly make it as personal as you want. And the widgets you can add are what make this a winner. Playing around over the weekend, not only have you got the normal things like timers, weather and stopwatches, but you can also add some apps to this cover screen as well. So you can actually watch things like Netflix, and YouTube from the cover screen without actually having to flex the phone open and go inside of it. It's a brilliant idea. And I was just found that out when I was playing around over the weekend. I saw these apps in there. I wonder what they can do. There's not many apps that are compatible with the cover screen, but Netflix and YouTube will do nicely for me. When the phone is open, uh, typing on it doesn't feel quite as balanced as it does on an iPhone 14. Because it's just that little bit taller and thinner, it feels almost kind of cramped to type on. It doesn't feel as well balanced. It feels almost top heavy, if that's the best way I can describe it, but it more makes up for that in other ways, which we'll cover a little bit later on. And then to the elephant in the room, the crease. There is a crease there. You bought a foldable phone. There's got to be a crease. But all I would say is that Samsung have done a brilliant job of trying to engineer it out. It's as near invisible as it can possibly be. Yes, your finger can feel it. Yes, you do notice it. But a lot of the time, you're going to be using this phone in flex mode anyway. And when it's in flex mode, the curve is so smooth that it looks perfect. It looks, it's designed for what it's meant to do. It's meant to be a flip phone. So when it's flat, yes, you do notice it. But honestly, it really isn't all that bad. And if you're enjoying this video and other videos that you may have watched recently, please, please do spend just a moment and give me that sub. I know it doesn't seem a lot, and I know you hear creators talking about it all the time, and it probably sounds like a broken record, but it really does matter. These phones don't come cheap. All of the kit I'm buying to you on this channel, I'm having to pay for myself at the moment. Although I'm meant to be monetized, you wouldn't know it. So anything you can do to help me with the subs, liking, sharing, it will just help get this video out to more and more people. And the more people see it, the more subs we get, and hopefully the channel can grow and I can carry on buying these products 
to review for you. And if there's any products you'd like me to think of reviewing, just let me know in the comments or get in touch with me. You can get in touch with me via my website. And while you're over at my website, talkingtechandaudio.com, you can also leave me your details there and you've become part of the members newsletter. I send out a free video every weekend, every Sunday lunchtime, just behind the scenes, what's going on in my life and in the world of this channel, things I can't really talk about on the main video. If that interests you, leave me details there. But if you've got a second, just a second, and you're finding these videos interesting and informative, that sub really would help. The hinge on this phone has been completely redesigned and as near as damn it, it is totally flat now. There's virtually no gap at all. And not only does it look great and feel great, but it also is great for the glass inside because the flatter it is, it means there's less chance of any dust, dirt, or grit getting in there to scratch the glass. Although the glass is Gorilla Glass 2, Victus 2, so it should last pretty well anyway. And there is a screen protector on there. And Daniel from Tech with Benefits said to me when he joined me the other day, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a link to it just now. But when I was talking to Daniel, he said, leave that screen protector on. It's just good added protection for the screens in there. It's also got water resistance of IPX8. So basically, this is a strong little fella. You shouldn't get damaged anytime soon. This phone gets a 3,700 milliamp hour battery and it's not the quickest to charge. It took me nearly a couple of hours to charge it from 20% up to 100%. As to how long it's lasting, well, yesterday when I finished charging around about 10.30 and then I hammered the phone yesterday, I was video testing on it, camera testing on it, doing call quality testing on it, loading a load of apps onto it and inputting all sorts of passwords and so on. So it had a lot of use yesterday and when I woke up this morning, it was down to about 23%. So it didn't last too bad. It also supports QI wireless charging and you can reverse charge on it as well. From a call quality point of view, certainly the network that I was on yesterday sounded great. I could hear them perfectly well. It was in a reasonably woody area. I don't know what reception was like, but it sounded great. And the person at the other end said, yep, they could hear me just fine as well. Samsung have got a very neat function in here though. If you're using Bluetooth headphones or earbuds, they've got this adapt sound feature. Basically, it tries to make the sound as good as possible for your ears. So be it if your right ear needs a little bit more loudness than the left ear. It's a feature that you'll find in the sound setting. And it's a, basically it's a beep test. You just have to say, you put in your age group, I'm embarrassed to say where mine fell, <laughs> then you just do this beep test and say what beeps you can hear and what beeps you can't hear. And then hopefully it's gonna adapt and make the sound tailored to your particular hearing. A nice little touch. Listening to content on this phone, the speakers aren't as good as the iPhone 14. The iPhone 14 is still a class leader from a speaker point of view, but most of the time, of course, when you're listening to music, podcast, content of any kind, you're gonna be using earbuds of some sort, I would have thought anyway, but unlike Sound the Nothing phone, there is an EQ on here. You do get an equalizer, so you can tailor the sound a little bit to suit your needs better anyway. And also something I found yesterday when you're recording video, they give you 360 degree audio recording as well. Again, if you're using Bluetooth headphones or earbuds, the phone has got a lot of features on there and I'm just beginning to find some of these out. It's really, really individual. And so far I'm enjoying using it an awful lot. And now on to the cameras, of course. The cameras are what we're all interested in. And that is where this phone really starts to come into its own. First of specs, you only get two main cameras on the Flip 5, a wide and an ultra wide, both of which are 12 megapixels with up to 10 times digital zoom. And then you have a 10 megapixel selfie camera. The wide camera has an f1.8 aperture, while both the ultra wide and the front cameras have an f2.2 aperture. You've got all the video functions and features on here you'd expect and want. You get a pro video setting, you've got slow-mo, super slow-mo, and you can record in 10-bit HDR2 as well. And certainly using the cameras yesterday, the, the results you get are every bit as easy to get good results with this camera as they are from an iPhone 14. If you watch my Nothing 2 review, you'll know that I said you can get good results out of that, but you had to work a bit harder. But with this camera, it was simply a case of opening up and using it. It just looked so good. The colors straight out of the camera looked vibrant, punchy, sharp. Honestly, considering these are only 12 megapixel cameras, they are hitting so far above their weight. The pictures and the video quality from this phone are amazing good. A test for the selfie camera on this Z Flip 5. Seems a long way of saying it. The Flip 5, we'll call it that. Uh, I'm just seeing what it's like in daylight. I'll take some in sunshine in a moment. And also what I'll try doing is taking some video with the front facing camera because of course I can set it up and I'm going to try all sorts of things while I'm out. So I'm going to sit down and just park the phone up and see how effective this is. Also, it'd be interesting to hear what the microphones are like, what the uh, quality of the video itself is like, what skin tones it always a giveaway, and what the motion stabilization is like, as well as you can tell I'm walking at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how it deals with that as well. A 
another first this is shooting in the flex mode so I've got the camera in the palm of my hand and it's uh, set up to 90 degrees and everything's working just fine so I'm using a selfie camera but it looks like it's doing a good job I am using studio buds at the moment so the next videos that I record I'll take the earbuds out so you can get an idea of what the native microphones and uh, what the pickup of the voice is like so this is now uh, again, as I hope you'll be able to tell, I'm going to try and work all this out in the edit. I've got these great plans. It always sounds simple in my head until I sit there editing it down later. But anyway, this is now using the cover camera, the main cameras, uh, so you can see what the quality of this is like. Uh, again, all the normal things. It'd be great to see what the mics are like, what the skin tones are like, what the light is like, uh, and just compare up what these cameras are like. But they're super simple to use, and you can flick between using the inside camera to the outside camera. It's just one quick toggle of a switch, and you're there. It's really quick and easy to set up. And I just thought I'd give this a shot as well. This is now with the camera folded up with the main cameras that are on the cover of the phone, seeing how this shoots and how this sounds. I haven't got the earbuds in anymore, so this is the native microphone that you're picking up. And again, be interested to see what the stabilization is like. The flex mode is one of the Flip 5's selling points. It's one of its USPs when you've got it in that open state. I found out over the weekend, for instance, that you can have, say, photos you're editing or looking at at the top and at the bottom half of the screen, you can open up the trackpad and you can bring apps into there. I was able to even bring YouTube onto the same screen. Basically, I was multitasking on this phone, which is something I've never been able to do on an iPhone. But it just seems that there's so much that you can do with these screens when they're in flex mode. They're stunningly good fun to use. And it's a content creator's dream. It really is because it's almost like a, a run and gun kind of setup for a studio. You've got that ready-made tripod, basically. And of course, you can use the front facing camera with it set up like that on the desk. So you can be sitting on the other side, recording into the main camera, seeing that you're in frame, which is not something I'm used to, and getting great results all of the time. This is a content, a, certainly a solo content creator's dream. It's got everything you need just to get you out of trouble when you're out and about during the day, I really can see using this phone a lot from that point of view when I want to just do a quick bit to camera and know that I'm in frame. I hate doing selfies and then getting back. I always use the main camera, but so often you're slightly out of frame when you're working alone. But with this, that's never going to be a problem. And they've also got a great feature as well. If you're out of reach of the camera and you're taking a picture, you don't need to be able to touch it. All you do is simply hold your hand up in front of your face. The Samsung recognizes it. It gives you a three or five second countdown and takes image for you. There's so much thought gone into this. It's brilliant. So I've now been using the phone for the last couple of days and what my thoughts on it so far. Well, I'm liking it. The OS is different. Although it's Android, of course, it's a little bit different from the nothing and from the Pixel that I've been testing recently. Not a bad way, just in a different way. So it took me a bit of time to get used to that. And one thing I was really looking forward to trying was DeX. Now, Samsung users bang on about DeX like iPhone users bang on about AirDrop. But sadly, the Flip isn't enabled with DeX, so that'll have to wait for another day. But outside of that, getting used to using the phone and how quick it's been, I've loved. Now, yes, there is a fold. There is a crease on it. I wasn't necessarily, I didn't think I was a target market for this kind of phone. And when it's open flat, yes, you can see it, and yes, you can feel it. As good a job as they've done to engineer it out, it is there. But most of the time, this phone isn't going to be used in the flat mode. And I'm sitting at home on the sofa, I've got it in the flex mode because it's more comfortable to use that way. You can scroll and navigate through features, functions, apps. It's just a much more intuitive way to use this phone. So the fold isn't an issue. It's a foldable phone. There has to be a crease and Samsung have done a great job of getting rid of it. And for the longest time now, Apple have always been running scared of foldable devices. Whether we'll ever see a foldable device from Apple, who knows? But this one is here and Samsung have done a really great job with it. And I think Apple should be just a little bit worried. iPhone 15 season is just around the corner. And the odds are that it's going to look pretty much the same as the previous year and the year before that. And we already know what the OS is going to be. It's had some tweaks. It's got a few new features. But Apple should be worried. They should be looking at the competition. They were always leaders in my mind. But using Android over these past few weeks, I can see that Android has got some great features. People rave about the Samsung S23, the flagship Samsung phone. Maybe that's worth taking a look at too. And I'm certainly very interested in looking at the Pixel 8, but that's all for other videos. This little fella, this Flip 5, is a great phone. It's really, really impressed me over the weekend. It's fun and it's quirky. And you know what? In this world of bland slab phones that are just like cars, as I said at the beginning of the video, what Samsung have done with this 
they have made us a classic sports car. They've given us something fun, something that's great to use, something that's enjoyable, and just that little bit different. If you enjoyed this video with me talking about this phone, I'm gonna leave some videos at the end that you might like to watch as well about the Nothing phone I've been looking at recently and also the Pixel 7 Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget that sub would be amazing. It really would help the channel out. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with you next week with more content. I'll see you then.